Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Right now, I'm so annoyed, I can't even be bothered to come up with something dumb to say right now, because I'm blinded by my anger towards Nickelodeon and their modern actions to even care about my actual life that I don't have. SpongeBob SquarePants has seven main characters that appear most frequently in episodes throughout every season. It's something that people these days don't say anymore. These days, people seem to consider the show to have ten main characters instead of just seven. In addition to the usual Spongebob, Patrick, Sewer, Mr. Krabs, Sandy, Gary, and Plankton, people often talk about Mrs. Puff, Pearl, and Karen being main characters too. I can definitely understand why some people consider those characters to be main characters. Mrs. Puff is also the character that saved the series. It's common knowledge at this point, but long story short, Steven Hillenburg wants Spongebob to be an adult who acts like a kid, Nickelodeon wants Spongebob to be a kid, and Mrs. Puff and the Boating School were created as a compromise. Back on topic, they do appear semi-frequently, and a lot of people still remember them. People do talk about these characters more often than characters like Spongebob's parents, but these characters don't appear nearly as often as characters like Sandy or Plankton. Hell, Pearl herself didn't have a physical on-screen appearance in Season 5. All we officially got from that season was Pearl's voice being heard when she talked on the phone with Mr. Kratz from Episode 180, The Big Switch. What kind of main character doesn't have a physical on-screen appearance throughout an entire season? Imagine if Libby Folfax didn't appear at all during Season 2 of Jimmy Neutron. Would Libby be considered a main character at that point? That is one of the biggest reasons why I personally don't consider Mrs. Puff, Pearl, and Karen as main characters. Also, since people think of them as main characters, it just makes me wonder why Larry the Lobster isn't thought of as a main character too. Now sure, he doesn't appear as often as characters like Gary the Snail, but in seasons 1, 2, and 3, he made more appearances than Karen the computer wife did in those same seasons. He even made his debut before Plankton did. Larry debuted in episode 5, Ripped Pants from season 1, and Plankton debuted in episode 7, Plankton from season 1. Larry may not appear as often these days, but he's still a well-known character in the show. In addition to those reasons, this website I used to visit back in the day has stated these were the only seven main characters, and I've had that mentality ever since. There's also a fan conspiracy created from this fact. These are the seven deadly sins, and it's been rumored that each of the main characters is based on one of them. Because of all this, I will always consider the series to have seven main characters. I wonder if the SpongeBob characters will notice if I talk about them like this. With all the main characters, not all of them appear in every episode. Sometimes in the modern seasons, it feels like Patrick or even Squidward had less screen time during certain occasions. But the character who is known as the main character who appears the least often is Sandy Cheeks. As a kid, I noticed that Sandy hasn't made a ton of appearances. Sometimes she had a major or supporting role in the A episode and didn't appear at all in the B episode. So on occasion, it felt great when she made an appearance at all. Seasons 8 and 11 are the seasons where she made the most appearances, with 17 appearances in both of those seasons. She only made 4 appearances in season 10, but there were only 22 individual episodes that season, so take that as you will. If we're talking percentages, season 12 is currently the season with the lowest percentage of episodes that have Sandy, 2 episodes for a whole season. The percentage is even lower than season 10. And even then, not all episodes from season 12 have aired as of 2021, which leaves me saying this. Nickelodeon, what the f is your problem? So if you're one of those people who's pissed by the amount of appearances that Sandy has not made in the series, it's your lucky day in 2021. Because Nickelodeon has announced a spin-off Sandy Cheeks live action animated hybrid movie was in the works for Netflix. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, Mikey. Why do you keep talking about all these spin-offs? You know that all these complaints aren't going to do anything good for society. Yeah, I know that, but it's fun pointing out when companies make bad decisions that also make no sense and that'll hurt them in the long run. And I'm not doing this because I've run out of ideas. Now we're all aware of how Brian Robbins became president of Nickelodeon in late 2018 and announced Spongebob spin-offs in February 2019. That announcement at the time made the spin-offs feel vague because it could have been either just a few non-canon animated shorts around other characters or entire TV shows in completely different settings. 
As Camp Coral was confirmed later down the line, Nickelodeon got drunk and thought, we can't just stop there. In March 2020, there was an announcement stating that they decided to create two feature-length spin-off films exclusive to Netflix. There wasn't much news about this at the time, and I was ignoring this because season 12 episodes were premiering on TV at that moment, and the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run hadn't been delayed or pulled from theaters at this particular time. Then the movie was delayed and put on Paramount Plus, yada yada yada, we all know the story. Then in May 2021, it was revealed that one of the spin-off movies I'm talking about was a live action CGI hybrid, and it would take place in New Mexico and star Sandy Cheeks. Did Nickelodeon forget that Sandy Cheeks is from Texas and gets furious when others take the name of Texas in vain? But then three months later, in August 2021, they announced the plans to film in Los Alamos were scrapped and the movie would just be 3D animated with live action segments. That same month, the title for this movie was confirmed to be Saving Bikini Bottom. I have no words for this one. If it wasn't already obvious, yeah, there are a shit ton of problems with this movie. I will admit though, there are a few things about this movie that make me have slightly better thoughts on it. And I say slightly in the lightest way possible. As I previously mentioned, Sandy Cheeks is known as the main character that appears the least throughout the show. Even though she has a lot of big roles in most of the episodes she appears in, there's definitely some fans out there that do wish there was some kind of character development or expansion on her. I remember when I realized how little Sandy appeared back in the day, and I wanted that character development to an extent. She is also the only of these seven main characters that haven't fallen in love on screen, so that would be kind of cool to see. Everybody's wondered how Sandy's tree dome got to the bottom of the ocean, so that could be revealed. But that's something that should be revealed in the regular series, not any spin spinoff. Additionally, we could learn more about Sandy's family. However, the show has actually stated more on Sandy's family than you may think. In episode 189, Pest of the West from season 5, Sandy mentioned how she had a great aunt named Rosie Cheeks who was the first squirrel to discover oil at Smiddletop, Texas. In episode 196, Stanley S. Squarepants from season 5, she had a Scottish cousin who appeared and had one line. In episode 266, Rodeo Days from season 7, she revealed she had a twin brother named Randy who sent her a letter. In episode 308, Mooncation from season 8, she mentioned her grandpappy in one sentence. In episode 342, Squirrel Record from season 9, she was revealed to have 100 woodchuck cousins with at least one of them named Earl. In episode 476, Sandy's Nutty Nieces from season 12, we were introduced to Sandy's sister Rosie and Rosie's three daughters, who were Sandy's three nieces, Macadamia, Hazelnut, and Pistachio. She also had at least one ancestor, the Dark Knight, from episode 127, Dunces and Dragons from season 4. Now you might be saying, Mikey, this is cool, but what about Sandy's parents? Well, do I have something to show you? In episode 80, Sandy Spongebob and the Worm from season 2, Sandy's father was briefly mentioned during a scene in the middle of the episode. Also, he, along with Sandy's mom, was shown. In this one shot that has a framed photo from Sandy's chopped down tree in episode 452, Surf and Turf from season 11. That's it. I was amazed going through all this and learned there was more to Sandy's family than I remembered off the top of my head. So a spinoff could expand more on Sandy's family. Of course, after seeing how the Patrick Star show treated Patrick's family, I have no hope for anything like what I just mentioned about Sandy's family in this upcoming spin-off movie. However, any of this shit can be done in any random episode of the regular series. I've said it once, I'll say it a million times. Most, if not all, story ideas can work in some kind of context within the main show, and Nickelodeon doesn't need to create the dumbass spin-offs just to execute these ideas. Yes, Nickelodeon created Planet Sheen as a spin-off of Jimmy Neutron focused on Sheen, and everybody knows what happened here. And while I still haven't watched the Patrick Star show, just seeing commercials for it tells me it's basically a repeat of Planet Sheen. Stupid. Another thing I think is worth mentioning is how the show is planned to come out on Netflix rather than Nickelodeon. I have had my thoughts about the distribution methods of Cam Coral and the Patrick Star show, but the more I think about it, the more I just don't want the spinoffs anywhere near me, so I don't give a shit with how Nickelodeon distributes these Spongebob spinoffs anymore. All I wish is that seasons 12 and 13 would air all of their remaining new episodes every now and then at some point. After that, release all of them via some kind of physical media. 
Then, if they renewed the spinoffs and ended the main show, that would probably make me happier. Not only could I move on with my life, but I would be happy with the 500 some odd episodes of the main series and not have to give a piss about what happens with the spin-offs. Now I want to talk about the movie itself. Of course, we don't know much about it as of this time, we'll know more about the movie later. It's been stated that the movie will take place in New Mexico. While I am kind of pissed about it, this doesn't necessarily mean that the movie is going to say that she's from New Mexico. There will probably be some kind of story context as to why it'll take place in New Mexico and not Texas. But knowing Nickelodeon, they'll probably want to retcon all the Spongebob lore and say Sandy's from New Mexico now, but who knows at the moment. This next part doesn't make me angry, just f***ing befuddled. This movie is classified as a spin-off, but when we look at its article on Encyclopedia Spongebobia, we can see that there's this chronological list of movies, and we can see that the page is stating it's next in line after the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run. But when we look at this list of the movies from the main show, we can see only the three movies from the actual show and not the spin-offs. There's this simplified list of movies on that same page that doesn't list the two spin-off movies, asterisk. There's even this dedicated list of spin-offs that list the two movies under it. The fact that there's a whole list on that website for how many spin-offs Nickelodeon is making is just ridiculous. So this part right here is just making it a bit confusing as it's making the spin-off movies seem like they're a part of the core series. But I will stand by the Sandy movie and whatever this other movie being spin-offs. The last thing I want to address is the title. Saving Bikini Bottom. Why is this the title? This title could be the title of almost any episode of the main series. There's at least one episode per season where Bikini Bottom is in danger and the characters have to save their city. That is also a plot point in all three of the other movies from this point. Why is this the title? Why? Now yes, I understand that this could very much be a working title and it could be changed later down the line. But why they're even considering this to be the title is absolutely beyond me. Since the main show has three movies with good titles, why can't the spin-off movie have a better title? Even the most generic action movies or video games of all time have better titles than this movie. Considering how much we know about this movie at the moment, all of this is likely going to change later down the line. Still doesn't excuse the fact it's still in production though. That's pretty much all I have to say about this at the moment. At this point, I'm probably just repeating myself, but at least it gives me a chance to let all my anger out. While I will never look past Nickelodeon's actions these days, the worst thing they ever did to Spongebob, in my opinion, is the fact that they literally banned two episodes from ever airing again. Wait, what did I just say? Yeah, Nickelodeon did the unthinkable. No matter how stupid some of their past actions were, or how low they will stoop in the future, this is something I never thought they would do. There will never be a good enough reason, in my opinion, for a Spongebob episode to be banned. Now yes, I did read this article and saw their reasons, but I'm too pissed off right now to show the article right here right now. And like I said, out of all of their bad decisions, like canceling Danny Phantom and allowing this to exist within season 11 of all that, this takes the cake. To an extent at least. If Nickelodeon will go to extreme lengths of defying Steven Hillenburg's limits and vision for his series by creating spin-offs and then go to extremer lengths by pulling episodes from the main series from airing on TV or being released on streaming services, what the f are their f***ing goals here? I'll probably talk about this at some point later down the line, but I'm already pissed off enough as is with the Sadie Cheek spin-off movie, so I'm gonna wrap it up. What once was a network full of creative, funny, and awesome shows has become a shell of its former self that only cares about Spongebob and feels the need to appease the modern generations when they don't really need to. While I will admit that the Sandy Cheek spin-off movie doesn't seem as bad as Cam Coral or the Patrick Star Show, I'm still pissed with Nickelodeon for doing pretty much everything I talked about here today. I don't care how the spin-offs turn out later down the line, I can just tell that this is one of, if not the worst, possible directions for them to go in. They're a company, they should know better. But this whole rant has made me realize one thing about that company. That making sense makes absolutely no sense to Nickelodeon.